Anytime someone does something to us that hurts or bothers us, either with their words or their actions, we tend to respond with this idea of payback. We automatically go to that thought that those who bring us negativity should get theirs, should get what's coming to them. We want to retaliate and we want to return their actions with what we believe is a suitable reaction. We do this all the time. I mean, we especially see it on social media. On Facebook especially, which was where I tend to do all my social media, is we're wanting to respond to everything that everyone else is saying, either on their pages or on ours. Now, I experience this frequently with my niece. See, she's one of those who she will retaliate verbally to you if you say something on your Facebook page that offends or bothers her. And then you end up in this ongoing battle that ends up benefiting no one. Now the problem here is that God made us to be kind human beings, but that human aspect tends to get in the way and mess everything up on us. See, we get this sense of enjoyment at times out of returning that pain for pain when someone hurts or offends us. And this gets us no further ahead in life. It doesn't help to return evil for evil. And a great example of this, I watched this video. Okay, This guy was getting a telemarketing call. They were trying to scam him out of money, claiming that he owed money to the IRS. Now, some of this was really funny. Like, my, one of my favorite parts was every time the scammer said you had an outstanding balance, the guy's like, no, 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 I ordered a lawnmower that I can sit down on. And you can tell the scammer, he's getting all frustrated. But even more funny than that is this scammer told the guy, you need to go to Target, put money on the gift cards, and that's how you're going to repay the IRS with Target gift cards. Now, at this point, I'm just chuckling. I am just loving what this guy is doing. And the part of it that is re was rewarding to see is this guy was wasting the scammer's time. And his goal was to avoid that scammer from scamming at least one other person, which was a good cause. But then it got sad because the guy being scammed started cussing and name-calling the scammer. And then that turned into a situation where it was going back and forth. There was threats and everything on both sides. And it ended up showing a negative part of humanity. In the end, this exchange did not make either person look good in that video. And it got neither of them any further along in their lives. And it doesn't benefit them. Much like our gospel lesson starts out by asking us, eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth, is that going to get you anywhere? Does it get us anywhere when we return hate for hate and pain for pain? In the end, it only causes us to look just as bad as those who are hurting us. We, we were taught many wonderful things by the Lord and by our biblical writers. So we open our Old Testament today, and it starts out by telling us that when you harvest your land, don't harvest it right up to the edges of the field or gather the gleanings from the harvest. Don't strip your vineyard bare or go back for the fallen grapes. Leave them for the poor and the foreigner. This is something that's really wonderful to hear because to be kind to those in need and allow the needy to be able to be fed, we're not just feeding them, but we're also showing them that kindness that the Lord shows to us. There are those of us that have been blessed 
with an abundance to the extent that we are not always able to use all that we have. And so with this abundance, we tend to hoard it and keep it for ourselves or for those that are close to us while there are still people out in this world that are in need. So does it really help us to hoard what we have, to keep everything from our harvest, and to pick up that final grape? Our Old Testament does not stop there. See, it goes on, and it gives us this long list of things that we should not be doing. It tells us, to do not steal or lie. Don't deceive anyone. Don't swear falsely. Don't exploit. Don't hold back wages. Don't curse the deaf or place a stumbling block in front of the blind. Don't pervert justice by showing favoritism over the poor or the rich. Don't spread gossip or stand by when a neighbor is in danger. Don't hate your neighbor or seek revenge or carry a grudge. This lesson, this God, this Old Testament lesson ends by telling us that we should love our neighbors as ourselves. And this is a wonderful lesson for us to keep close to heart as the Lord teaches it to us because this becomes a base. <clears throat> it becomes a foundation of what we believe. And how we should act as Christians, believers in God. It is up to us to continue to build on this foundation as we hear our New Testament go on and tell us that each carpenter who comes on the job take care to build on the foundation. Remember, there is only one foundation, the one already laid, Jesus Christ. We don't need to rebuild a foundation when Jesus Christ and His teachings are already there for us to grow from. We are God's creation, and we are meant to be kind and loving, generous to those around us, and willing to let go of ill feelings that we may have for someone else in this world. See, not only are we building on this foundation placed for us by the Lord, but we are a temple ourselves meant to sit on this foundation. Meant to be for God. We hear it said in the New Testament lesson when Paul does tell those people of Corinth that you realize, don't you, that you are the temple of God and God Himself is present in you. No one will get by with vandaling God's temple. You can be sure of that. God's temple is sacred. And you, remember, are that temple. See, nothing will get away with vandalizing that temple of God that is us. Not even ourselves. This is why we need to be examples of God so that we will not bring a negative view of God's kingdom to those around us. And the best way to avoid desecrating God's temple is to be that shining example of love and kindness that the Lord wants us to be. And we start doing this by listening and following the teachings of of Jesus Christ. Now, we hear more again in our Gospel lesson from the Sermon on the Mount, which is filled with many wonderful lessons for us to live by that Jesus felt was important for us to know. And what I like what He does in His Sermon on the Mount is He takes some of those Old Testament lessons and He turns them around a little bit and gives us a different view and focuses on this idea of love and kindness. See, when talking about the eye for an eye, he goes ahead and he tells us in the Gospel lesson, if someone strikes you, stand there and take it. If someone drives you into court and sues you for the shirt off your back, 
gift wrap your best coat and give it as a present. And if someone takes unfair advantage of you, use that occasion to practice the servant life. See, Jesus makes it clear to us that He does not like the idea of us returning pain for pain. So we need to take this foundational teaching and build on it in our own lives. I love what we hear I love what we hear Jesus go on to tell the people when He says that you're familiar with that old law, love your friend, and the unwritten law, hate your enemy. I am challenging that. I'm telling you to love your enemies. Let them bring out the best in you. Not the worst. This is something that has come to heart for myself. As I work in a cafe on a college campus and deal with a lot of young, opinionated college kids who think they know more than everybody else. And I come in contact with these people day in and day out, and we have differing opinions, and the problem is, is that they start hating me because of my opinions. Because my opinions differ from theirs. So what do I do? I love them. And I still show them kindness and treat them like human beings. Because when we return that hate for hate, we're not showing positivity anymore. And it's not what the Lord wants from us. So we let that situation of hate bring out the best in us. And show that kindness that God has showered upon each and every one of us. So we can let those negative moments bring out the best in us, especially when we recall the teachings that we're hearing in our lessons today. And then we build on that foundation, that base that that Lord has given to us. Don't let this firm foundation that is Jesus Christ Go to waste and sit here without that wonderful, amazing temple. That temple that is us. Sit on this foundation that is love and kindness and live it out each day with all whom we encounter. I really enjoy how we hear Jesus in the closing moments of our Gospel lesson, tell all of those that He was speaking to in that moment that live out your God-centered identity. Live generously and graciously towards others the way God lives towards you. God is so generous and gracious to each and every one of us. And it's up to us to spread that generosity and that graciousness to everyone that we meet. Rich or poor, friend or enemy, weak or strong, does not matter. We are to live this way towards everyone that we encounter each and every day in our lives. So I implore you to go out and live out your God-centered identity in this world. Peace and love to you all this morning.